probably realize this because well, you, know, you guys are quite strong man. Before you launch into a question, it's always helpful to say, well, before I give this a crack, is there anything I can do before I just sort of like dive straight in? Okay, is there anything that can help me understand what's going on? Can I manipulate or simplify this in any way such that I can get something that's gonna be easier once I actually get to the graph here, okay? Now, what I'm gonna show you is minor significance, but I actually think it'll be helpful when we do the graph and we add them together. You've got two parabolas here, right? But you've got absolute values applied to both of them. Now, we're not all that used to working with absolute values and simplifying them too much, but you should get a little more familiar with them because they come up everywhere you take square roots and you're squaring things, and that's where absolute values really shine. So, what I want you to remember is, have a look at this guy at the front, right? Now, when you take the absolute value of a number, like say the absolute value of five, okay? What that really means is, what's the distance of five from the origin? And that's just five. Okay? But that's the same reason why when you say the absolute value of negative 5, you're doing more than just taking away the negative. Okay? You're saying, how far is negative 5 from the origin? And the answer is, well, it's also 5. Okay? So by definition, you can say that a value, the absolute value of a number, is the same as the absolute value of negative that number, because they're both the same distance from the origin. They've just gone opposite ways. Okay? So I'm going to take advantage of that over here, right? This looks a little more awkward than it actually is. What you really have is this. Okay? You see what I've done? Over on that left hand side, that parabola, I mean, the absolute value of 9 minus x squared, that's the distance from the origin, right? Well, I can flip it around, that's just the negative, okay? And the distance from the origin remains the same, okay? Now, the reason why that's helpful is because. That shows that these two guys are really the same graph, just moved up and down a little bit. Okay, They've just been moved up and down. And that will actually be critically important for when we add these things together. Okay, So now, if you haven't already, I'm going to call this one my green one, and I'm going to make the other one blue. You're going to be graphing this thing, and they're just going to be shifted <coughs> vertically. Okay, Because of the absolute value, they will hit down here and then bounce back up, but that's okay. Do one, do the other. I'll give you a minute to get those two problems on. Give you a bit of a tip. Try and make them quite accurate. Okay, if you've got a template, this will really help you. Because look at these things. They're the same parabola. They should share the same gradient everywhere vertically, right? They're just up and down, shifted into different spots. So if you've got a template, that will help you do it. Because um, I'm going to give it a shot, but I'm not that optimistic. Give it a go, and then let's see what happens when we add them. Go. So I hope you've got your components on there. Again, I talk about, in case you hadn't heard it, me sort of getting the implied meaning by me just saying it. Um, I talk about these as components. They're the bits that come together. And the whole thing is the composite. That's what you get when you've got everything all considered. right? Now, we're thinking about addition and subtraction of ordinates. Again, think about the easy things before you get to the hard ones. So, would anyone like me to have, um, would anyone like to suggest an easy point that we could take? How about x equals zero? It is frequently an easy place to go, right? Um, so you've got a four here, there's your intercept, and you've got nine. So four plus nine, 13. Okay, so no big deal, right? Are there any other easy points that I could go for? Yeah, good. So anywhere you've got roots, right? Roots are great because zero plus anything is the anything, whatever the other value was, okay? So if you've got a ruler there, and I do not, hmm. That's weird. Um, oh wait, hold on. Uh, well, actually, you know what? This will do. I don't need to measure it. All you need to do is take your ruler, and anywhere you've got a root, you just say, well, okay. Mm. How vertical is that? <laughs> there you go. Does that look pretty vertical to you? I'm a bit off at a distance. I'm going to be here, right? You see, that's zero plus something else. Yes? And then I've got another zero over here. Okay, so let's see how good my... Hey, that was not bad, actually. That was really coincidental. Also, oh, it is not... It is okay, now, remember I said, do your very best to do this accurately. If you haven't done it super accurately, then it's okay. But I'm going to make an argument from this in a second. Okay? I've got a point up here. Right? What's happening in between here and this point that I know? Right? Let's not just think of individual ordinates now. Let's think about the whole thing and how it's behaving. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. So think about think about um, what you know from geometrical applications of calculus, right? Um, in between naught and two, your green graph is decreasing. Yes? Yeah, that. The blue graph is also decreasing. 
So if you've got two things that are decreasing and you add them together, then they'll be decreasing even faster. It's like, it's like you know, um, <laughs> my, my kids like fruit. So I, I, I'll cut a mango for them, okay? And if I give them one plate and they're both eating, it goes twice as fast. It just, it's all gone. Like, seriously? I'm like, hey, where's my food? It's disappeared. So therefore, right, you picture this kind of like they're both taking away from it. So from here, I'm coming down this great distance and I'm doing it really fast, okay? So therefore, I'm getting something like this. Yeah, it should be a bit more horizontal, but you get the idea. Okay, so there's the first piece of the graph. And by the way, I hope you've caught on to the fact of why I'm only looking at the right-hand side. Why am I looking at the right-hand side? Even functions, add two even functions, you get another even function. Okay, now what's happening in between here? Now, based on the awesomeness of my graph, you have a decent guess as to what's happening, right? Like, look, I, I start here, and then somehow I've got to end here. The question is, what am I doing in between? Okay. Now, your intuition ought to tell you, well, well, straight across, right? But you can do better than intuition. Remember I said to you, these graphs are the same graphs. They are just flipped vertically, right? Sorry, not flipped vertically, shifted vertically, okay? So therefore, when I move this over, right, this downward gradient on the green should be exactly matching this upward gradient on the blue. Does that make sense? They're the same graph, they've just been flipped. One's been flipped, one's going down and one's going up. But they're going up at the same rate, and going down and going up at the same rate. So when you put them together, right, it's like someone filling up a bucket and someone emptying it at exactly the same speed, right? So the net gain is zero, okay? So you've got a horizontal line there. That's a bit weird, but again, do you remember we started off looking at sine x plus the absolute value of sine x, and it was exactly the same thing. When you get these absolute values, if they share the same gradient, then they'll exactly cancel out at certain points in the domain. Okay. Last piece here now, just like I made the argument from 0 to 2, I've got decreasing plus decreasing means really decreasing. Well, over here on the right hand side you'd say, Really increasing plus increasing is really, really, really increasing, okay? So that's important, by the way, because that means when I draw this new gradient up, it has to be steeper than both of these, right? So that's why it's going to, well, there you go. It's pretty, pretty steep, right? Um, had I been a little more thoughtful, I might have drawn the vertical scale of this a bit more compressed so that I don't get, you know, parallel sequences drawing a vertical line. Because it's not a vertical line, but on my scale, it looks pretty close to it, Okay. Uh, that's it. That's all the behavior. Right? Over here on the right, there's no more changes. It just They both keep on climbing, so the black line will also keep on climbing. I've got everything on the right. Now it can reflect across because of the evenness of my functions. Okay? So I guess something like that. Oh, I back. You get the idea. Ta-da! And there's the sum of those two functions. Not difficult at all. If you think about it carefully, and logically, in fact, it's kind, of, um, it's kind of got a beauty of its own when you think about all of the symmetry that we took advantage of in order to graph it.